Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Today I'm going to show you a fun way to make some low poly clouds in Maya. So uh, let's take a look. Alright, so these are the low poly clouds we'll be creating today. They're pretty fun to make and they should fit in with a variety of low poly projects. So let's check it out. Okay, let's start. Go up to your poly modeling shelf and add a cube into the scene. We're going to use this as our uh, starting object. I'm going to press F to frame in on it and I want to bevel these edges. So let's open up the modeling toolkit. Up here you have your component modes and here is your edge selection. I like to use Maya's marking menu though, so I'm going to hold down the right mouse button to get to my component modes and choose edge. Then I'm going to box select all these edges and we can bevel it with this button. All right. Let's give it some segments. I'm going to give it four segments and I'm just going to round this out a bit more, so I'm going to play with the fraction a bit. All right, I think that works. And now I'm going to go back to object mode and I'm going to press W to go back to my move tool. What we want to do next is we want to duplicate this and um, kind of combine a few together to create a new shape. So one way to duplicate is to press Control D on the keyboard or uh, another fast way is just to hold down Shift and drag one of these arrows and that'll make a fast uh, duplication. So I'm going to rotate this, scale it down and try and create trying to create something random. There we go. And make another duplicate. I'm just holding down shift again. And then another one over here. I think that works. Maybe this one I'll scale down a bit. Then I'll uh, hold down shift, drag this over here somewhere. Scale this down a bit. Put another one over here. And maybe um, one more over here. So, all right. So now we have this, um, very random shape. Um, looks like a bunch of marshmallows stuck together is what it looks like. And um, what we can do now is combine it, it, combine it into one object. However, we're not going to use the regular combine button. We're going to Boolean this. So before I um, Boolean, one thing I like to do is turn on um, X-ray mode. It allows us to see whether the Boolean operation is working or not. So here's your X-ray button. I'm going to select everything and you can see um, these meshes are intersecting with each other. There's faces inside of um, other meshes, right? So let's go up to Mesh, Booleans, and then we're going to choose the Union op option. So that will combine everything and delete that um, interior geometry. And it worked. Awesome. Let's turn off X-Ray. Um, and then I'm just going to click off and turn on Wireframe Unshaded. Uh, you can see we have a bit of an issue there, though. Uh, these edges don't connect, right? So we kind of need to retopologize this. And I'm going to show you um, a method to do this. So I'm going to add a, a platonic solid into the scene. It's this one here. And I'm just going to move it off to the side so you guys can see it better. Let's uh, open up our channel box. Down here we have an input. It's the polyplatonic one. And we can give it some divisions. So I'm just going to um, maybe put three here. Yeah, three should work. Gives us about 1900. So now we can um, increase the size of this. And I'm going to move it back over here um, to cover this object. So uh, I'm going to hold down X though and drag this over here. If I turn on X-Ray, you can see that there, this object is over the other one. Perfect. And now what I want to do is I'm going to open up the outliner. I want to select um, this first object, um, the platonic solid, and then I'm going to hold down Control and select our Boolean mesh. And then what I want to do is go up here to deform and choose shrink wrap. And just like that, if I turn off x-ray, you can see that the um, platonic solid has wrapped around this one. It's kind of hard to see, so let's hide our uh, Boolean mesh. So let's select it and press H on the keyboard to hide it. Perfect. And now what I want to do is um, take this, maybe give it a color first. So I'm going to hold down the right mouse button choose Assign New Material, and I'm going to choose a Lambert. Over here in our Attribute Editor, I'm just going to mouse wheel down here till I get to Lambert 2, and I'm going to select this, and maybe I'm going to just give it a kind of like a light grayish blue color. So something like this can work. All right, and now what I want to do with this one is I'm going to select this, and I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. 
and you can tell that it already looks a little bit like a cloud. I'll turn off a uh, wireframe unshaded, right? And you know, for some projects, you might like this look. You might want to reduce the topology though, right? For us though, we're gonna make a low poly cloud. So let's select it. Um, one thing I like to do before I uh, start reducing this and turning it to triangles is I like to retopologize it because sometimes um, if I don't, I get very dense triangles in the corners, right? So I'm gonna select this mesh, go to mesh, and I'm going to go to the option box of retopologize. I'm just going to reset this. And I'm going to drag the face uniformity slider up to one. This is totally optional and it really depends on the look you want. Um, click retopologize. Give it a second. There you go. And now uh, we have some history here. We have transforms that need to be frozen. So I'm going to select this, go to delete history and freeze transformations. And now what we'll do is our triple threat. So if you um, came from the other tutorials, this will be familiar to you. We're gonna go um, first triangulate it, then we'll harden these edges, and then we can uh, reduce it. There we go. And now we just need to play with this percentage slider, essentially till we get the look we want. That actually looks pretty good, but I'm gonna reduce it a bit further. There you go, maybe a little more. Uh, there we go, I like that. And then I'll move this off to the side, maybe scale it up a bit. And we have like one cloud, this will look great in the distance. And then we're not done though, we have this shape here. And this is sort of like our cloud factory. So on the left here, we have some transforms that are left over from our Boolean operation. And we can select them and we can still move them around and it changes the shape. We can scale them, we can rotate it, and we can also delete it. Um, so something to keep in mind, though, is that if you delete it, um, it's gone. <laughs> so just plan out your shape uh, early. Um, use the Make the shapes that use the most transforms first, right? But um, for us, we're just going to make one more cloud. So let's um, change the shape a little bit. And um, so I'm going to select this one. Maybe I'll scale this one down. Over here, maybe I'll um, rotate this one a bit. Maybe move it over, right? Just making something different. I can even scale it in one axis if I, look, if I want. There we go. And there we go. And then maybe I'll, eh, I'll just leave that as is. So now we'll make one more. Let's select it. Print Control D to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna move it off to the side. And with this one, same thing. Let's um, go to Mesh, Retopologize. Then we'll delete that history, freeze transformations. And then our triple threat of Triangulate. Hardened edge and reduce. There you go. And now we just need to play with this slider a bit until we get um, a smaller cloud. So something like this probably looks pretty good. And I'll just move this over here. So um, we made some clouds and just want to mention that this is awesome for making bushes, uh, tree foliage, rock forms, right? So it's very versatile and it's very strong just because you can go back in here and reshape it. So play around with it, play around with your starting shape. But now you have um, your own little cloud factory, is what I like to call it. There you go. All right, that's how you make some low poly clouds in Maya. Hopefully you were able to learn something new. If you did, uh, consider leaving a like. It means a lot and it helps this channel to grow as well. Um, that's it for now. We'll see you in the next one though. This has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.